started good evening everyone i dr priya varni senior resident ltmmc and gh sai in mumbai will be moderating this session today on behalf of academia ipsm i would like to welcome you all to pg lecture series on managing healthcare system an organic approach on this e connect platform our today's topic is something that we would like to learn first i think and i'm definitely sure that as a resident one may not be able to put the concept all together in mind once we come across this topic so today to teach us with this we have with us dr rivu basu sir he is an md md mba pgdhm famer fellow cmcl sir is an assistant professor at all india institute of hygiene and public health kolkata i welcome sir you on behalf of ipsm e connect coming straight to the topic sir we would like to know what does one mean with the anatomy of healthcare system right so uh, i was thinking about this topic for quite some time now and uh, thank god uh, ipsm e connect gave me the opportunity so i am extremely grateful to you uh, to all the officials uh, for giving me this opportunity now uh, I, I always felt when I entered community medicine that uh, we are trained in a different modality, right? We are trained in a modality of where we learn anatomy, physiology, biochemistry in the first year, then pathology, then pharmacology, then medicine, surgery, gynae, etc. So the basic idea is that we at first look at the structure of the entire system. Then along with that, we look at the function of the system. So these are the two points. So firstly, we look at the structure of the system, and then we look at the function of the system. And then, what we do is we try to find out the relationship between the structure and the function. Okay. So that's why I decided to have my topics like this: the anatomy of healthcare systems, physiology of healthcare systems, discussion and remedies. So basically, we shall be knowing about the structure of the healthcare systems, the function, and the diseases of the healthcare systems per se and the remedies that can be there okay so that is how i have planned now uh, before we go i would like to emphasize why suddenly i chose this another reason the reason is that whenever think, we think of an organization we have a distinct purpose of the organization there is a structure in which the organization is set up and there are some people who work in the organization so there is a purpose a structure and people so we have seen research have seen that the traditional ways of organization are very rigid why are they rigid because there are a very strict set of rules regulations strict bureaucracy hierarchy and that sometimes makes the organization very difficult to move so what happens is that whenever some changes occur in the external environment you may have heard about sort analysis so whenever some changes appear in the external environment the organization fail to act to the changes in a fast manner it takes a lot of time to change in many cases the it, the change is not effective and the organization becomes inefficient now i am giving the example of a cat so if you are very familiar with cats i love cats uh, so if you are very familiar with cats you will see that they are a very flexible animal why because if a very small opening is there they will just they put their head inside and then they will put the entire body inside and go on the other plant so that is a very big advantage of a cat because it can adapt or it is flexible to the external environment it can change itself only if a particular structure a particular organization can change itself then it can survive otherwise the survival becomes challenged because to make it what should i say uh, fit to the external environment where it is working it a long time is required the ears the eyes the nose the skin and the tongue is not there what is that from these parts we receive our inputs so whenever something is happening in the environment we receive our inputs 
And to be very frank, an organic system has got a mechanism of thousands and lakhs of inputs which a medical student may appreciate. Whenever there is a cold, there is some uh, th thermostat in the brain, it takes care of that by increasing blood supplies and all those things. Whenever there is, uh, what should I say, uh, danger, there is a rush of adrenaline, the eyes dilate, people dilate, the fright and flight response is gets activated, we run up. So if the organization was not very flexible, these things wouldn't have occurred. And you may well appreciate the fact that, suppose you are working in a new company or a new uh, medical college, after some time, you tend to adjust to the college. We all adjust to different situations in a very good way. Why? Because even our brain is plastic, the neural connections, the brain is plastic, our personalities change, our behaviors change. And so human body is a very flexible thing. If the rigidity was there in human body, we would have never changed. So the same human body can work in a particular setup. Then he can work in another setup in a new city with a new relationship. So change is a constant thing. That is why we try to build our organizations very organic. So there are some more open communications instead of the hierarchy. There are more lateral and vertical communications. Employers get very satisfied. Employees get satisfied. For procedures are less formal. The creativism and the bureaucracy is not there. And there is more deeper relationship between the employers. We work as a team rather than committees, task forces, etc. At the same time, uh, I should be mentioning some of the disadvantages. Like there can be too many ideas sometimes. So if there are too many ideas from too many creative people, it is difficult to come to a consensus. That may lower productivity because a decision takes a long time to make when, when it is democratic. democratic. And also, uh, in some cases, the productivity may be decreased due to these reasons. Also, the regulations which we have to work in, the legal regulations, the uh, secretary regulations, uh, the regulations may be decreased in the working environment. Okay, so that is another problem, especially in healthcare, which is a very sensitive topic. So, these are the reasons why I have chosen this topic and to make this, uh, this, uh, the healthcare organizations more organic. I think it answered your question. Definitely, sir. As rightly put up, uh, Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest. One needs to know the skeleton, the anatomy before one actually starts or gets into any organization per se and chooses any career pathway. So coming to the physiology, that is now that we know that the skeleton, uh, we imagine the structure, sir. Can you please put up some light on how it functions, sir? How do the hierarchy, uh, how, how does this healthcare system function? What is the physiology behind it, sir? Right. So uh, it will be very good if I can talk about the anatomy and the physiology together. Now, uh, what I want to say is that Indian healthcare system is a very mixed system. There is no particular, uh, what should I say? Uh, structure. There is a mixture of private, there is a mixture of public, and there is a, also some other systems. So the government healthcare system is there, private healthcare system is there where people can just go to a doctor, just go to a diagnostic center, and it's quite irregulated, I should say. And there are some other systems like the CGHS, like the um, ESI, railways, where they have got their own system. Now, uh, as a government uh, personnel, I shall be discussing more about the, what should I say, government system more, right? Now, uh, firstly, I would like to discuss about the infrastructure of the systems, the human resources and the finances. So let's come to the points one by one. Regarding the, uh, so as I discussed that, I shall be discussing the anatomy and the physiology together, right? So whenever we are in a particular hospital, the hospital structure is there, the roads are there, the uh, ACs, fans, chairs, tables, 
all are there. So that is the infrastructure of the system. Healthcare systems need to have very definitive infrastructures because patients are involved, infections are involved, procedures are involved, ethics are involved. So the infrastructure has to be very specific. I'm giving you one or two examples of this. Suppose in a particular ward, which is mostly dealing with infectious diseases, which is spreading by airborne group like COVID, we need to have a laminar flow of air. So there has to be the windows should open on both the sides of the ward so that air flows from one part to other. If there is no laminar flow of air, we should have things like uh, very specific forms of ventilation, negative pressure ventilation so that the air gets replaced at a very frequent interval. Also, ethical parts come like, like we are trying to examine a female patient. Whenever we are trying to examine a female patient, we have to be sure that the examination is done behind a screen. We have all got those green screens in the hospitals and the examination if done by a male doctor, a female attendant should be there. So this is one ethical part. There are some feasibility or accessibility parts also to this. Like what? Whenever we de are designing a hospital or a clinic, we can think of many things other than the healthcare part also. Like the patient should be coming. So there should be waiting area for the patient. There can be a queue. So they should not be standing in a like a very high temperature or rain. So it should be shaded. There should be one or more uh, computer terminals for generating their tickets. There should be some waiting area. A receptionist will be there. Some announcements may be there. Ideally, the outdoors should be in the ground floor of the hospitals because on the upper floors, the indoors, the OTs should have been there. And also the diagnostic areas should be also in the ground floor so that for the daycare patients, for the OPD patients, they can just go to the uh, diagnostic center and then get their test done. Ideally, there should be a one window system of tests. Like what? Often we find in the government hospitals, a patient is prescribed to be tested on biochemistry, on pathology and on microbiology, suppose. For that, they go to the different departments, there they get different dates. So the same patient has to come two or three days for giving their blood. So it is a loss of wage to the patient, harassment to the patient. Also, the reports also come in two or three days. They will not give the report together. So the patient has to go all around the hospital campus to give the blood, take the report. There is harassment of the patient. We do not want that. We want the patients to be satisfied. That is why we can try for a one window system. What is that? You can see in many private hospitals, it is present. The patient goes to a single place to send this blood. The blood is taken there, put into three or four vials. The vials are sent to the different departments and the reports come to the patient in the reception itself. So these are very minor structural things or anatomical things that can be done to improve the patient satisfaction and improve the efficiency of the systems. So definitely to add in this, I would want to say that all our hospitals have been established like a like about decades before and now patients have to go from one building to the other walking across the whole campus like x-rays at one corner and biochemical examinations are at the other corner so that actually uh, stresses out the patient takes a lot of mental health toll to the patient and then patients are irritable sometimes they are also the weather conditions in our country it is a uh, temperate weather so most of the time our country is one of those that we have summers and summers all throughout the year and uh, definitely coming from Mumbai humid weather is something that uh, I think sir even Kolkata is experiencing the same Absolutely. so I think just that one window one window concept will actually make the life of the person sitting behind the window also easier as well as the patient sir right right okay so you are absolutely right so like uh and and if you would also agree on the ego of the different departments it is my part so mm -hmm. i shall do this why shall i shift there 
this happens right so uh, our target is customer satisfaction right and higher efficiency so why do not we adopt these systems okay so once the structure is formed and i am very happy to mention that iph standards 2022 which has been released by the government of india is a very well thought of document because they have mentioned the structures very uh, meticulously but again i should be saying that maybe uh, some latitude can be given that happens because uh, many of the pscs have already been uh, formed many of the uh, health and wellness centers have been formed so they cannot go to the structure but at least we can have the what should I say, uh, essence of their documents. These are very real built documents. I can give you another example. Okay. That is, uh, whenever in the PHCs, we often find that the for the labor room patients, there is a different uh, room where they are staying. And often, uh, they have to walk through the corridor to reach the bathroom. And you know the labor room patients, the, the bathrooms are very much required. Okay. So, these things will should be thought of okay as separate dressing places for the sisters and the female doctors and this kind of very minor minor corrections if that can be made makes life easy for all of us also more than the infrastructure along with the infrastructure rather i should mention about the equipments and the consumables so the equipments and the consumables are another thing which makes up the anatomy of the healthcare systems there is one point I would like to mention here, which I often find in government system, that the anatomy is there, the physiology is not there. What is that? Several equipments have come, but the trained technicians are not there to operate them. So the technicians are not trained, the annual maintenance contracts are not made properly. So the equipments are not used and the people are afraid to use them and they often get destroyed, damaged. So that's the wastage of people's money, right? So. This should this thing should be thought of. The training of technicians should be there. The a good AMC contract should be there. Now in the online system, training is not a very big thing. People can train anything, any place, right? So this should be thought of. Also with the consumables, uh, there are very good systems in the government of India now, like the JEM portal is there, and all those things are there. So the consumables, uh, the tendering processes are also quite well. But at the same time, uh, we also take some consumables at the local level in form of local purchase. So the flexibility is also there. But I think personally that like the some of the private hospitals, the consumables should be made perfectly online process so that the inventory ma management is not in some very big fat copies where it is written down and then it is calculated once a month and then suddenly some medicine gets out of stock. We have to give the patients some other medicines to console them. These are not done. We often see patients taking amlodipine for 15 days and then metoprolol for other 15 days because we do not have that uh, hypertensive anti medicine. This is not done. Definitely, right? sir. And more than that, sir, then finding that record because it is written in some book, one is not able to access. As we all are now, technology is now taking another leap, I guess. Uh, this is a very important point and all our new residents, teachers, everybody is getting trained with computers, with technology so that everybody can have the access to it, know when the stocks are getting depleted, if the stocks are uploaded in the real time. This Right. Exactly. So uh, the stocks will be uploaded in the real time. Uh, whenever the a particular medicine is dispatched, it will be recorded. And even we can connect the vendors with this kind of portal so that the vendors get automatic notification of when to supply the next batch of stocks. So often in the public health system, the stocks uh, are uh, diversified from the district to the PHCs and PHC to the subcenters, and it takes a lot of time to, like, what should I say, collate the reports, and it becomes an extremely tedious job. So a computer-based system can make this thing much easier. It can also give trends. Forecasting can be done. And we shall be becoming more intelligent persons. Also, I think costing will be decreased. If you can make this system, costing will be also decreased. Okay. The third point and the most important point, I am always mentioning that it is human resources. Human resources is something else. A machine do not have mind. It doesn't get angry with you. It doesn't have mood swings. 
whenever we are uh, like having an argument with our family, it doesn't reflect on the, it may reflect on our job on that day, right? A machine will not have that. The infrastructure will not have that. A medicine will not have that. So human resources are very, very sensitive to be, what should I say, tackled. We have to develop different plannings for, to tackle human resources. We cannot count them as numbers. As you may appreciate that previously, if you go to the history of management, Max Weber and all those scientists, they, Henry Fayol, they treated human resources as numbers, only numbers. I should say that even now, Indian, in many parts of India, human resources are treated as numbers only. Doctors to health care professionals one and all those things. That doesn't reflect the human resource because one may be working well, one may not be working well, one may have career aspirations, one may not be having career aspirations. So they have to be tackled in a different manner. And that is why we call something known as the human resource development. So whenever we talk about human resource development, uh, we think about their training, they think about their management, we think about how they will grow in their careers. Because nowadays, we always think that if the human resource he has got some objectives in his mind, he wants a steady source of income, some comfort for the family, some work satisfaction. And if the organizational objectives can be aligned with his objectives, he will be performing in a very proper manner. He will be working in a most effic efficient manner. So we have to know what are his aspirations, what are his thoughts, and we have to align that with the organizational objectives, right? So the career growth and all those things should be there, promotional management should be there, mechanisms of incentivization and disincentivization should be there, and we have to start thinking about training in uh, skills like conflict management, stress management, leadership, time management, etc. And of course, one thing I'd like to mention that in all of these structures, infrastructure, consumables, uh, equipments, human resource, the lateral talking has to be done. How does the infrastructure talk? The monitoring and the evolution part has to be done. We have to maintain the records. We have to maintain the uh, sheets in a very proper manner. The quality indicator should be there. There should be meetings regularly, informal and formal meetings. There should be channels of communication so that the organization can receive the feedback. There should be, uh, what should I say? mechanisms to tell the person that you can develop on these aspects like in case of medical teachers if the there is a portal where the roles and responsibilities of the persons are given we almost never give this roles and responsibilities except good institutions okay so we have to uh, take classes publish papers do research uh, apply for grants etc 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 and for each of these we get some points okay so these points you can see live in your system as a appraisal score. Also, there should be feedback from your colleagues. There should be feedback from your subordinates. There should be feedback from your bosses. Feedback should be from 360 degree. Otherwise, I have seen people who are very like good with their bosses, but not good with their colleagues. So that should stop, right? So this 360 degree appraisal will be all, all getting scored in that system. So that I know myself that where I am lacking, the feedbacks are there, the anonymous boxes may be there for feedbacks. So that this depends or this creates the promotional avenue other than anything else. If things are like that, people will be automatically getting oriented to that and the system will develop itself. Okay. Similarly, we can think of this kind of performance appraisal systems for the other functionaries also, for the doctors, nurses, etc. So that this software is working, this physiology is working. Okay, only human resources will form the hardware or the anatomy. But there has to be manipulated, there has to be work filled. So this internal talking, this feedbacks, this monitoring system should be there. They have to be skilled regarding conflicts, they have to be skilled regarding leadership quality so that they can work in a more efficient manner. So that is what I was trying to say about an organic system. And uh, combining anatomy and physiology of the organic system for a better efficient healthcare.
definitely sir and uh, as we all are uh, aware that uh, the era is changing robotics and robots everything is is now coming up but to not forget that behind every robotic mind there is a human resource uh, which is responsible so actually strengthening the basics is what we need in our country and uh, and i think all of us are awaiting for the time when even education will become so universal that from the apex most institute to the most uh, you know not reachable institutes like in 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 the not reachable areas villages still education can be seeped through and through so that we develop together as a country ahead sir exactly but sir sir we are extremely thankful to you for introducing us into the subject and then taking us through the anatomy and the physiology and integrating it with examples for our better understanding but i would like to request you sir some a disease that is endemic in our country we all know about it tuberculosis and we have been uh, making strategies we have been trying to implement it and i think we have had a lot of success in uh, in actually treating the disease in helping prevent the spread of the disease but sir could you tell us Uh, with respect to tuberculosis how would the healthcare system function or what would be the uh, rem- disease and remedy part of the topic today right so like whenever we are talking about a disease in the healthcare system it is not tuberculosis anymore it is some programmatic aspect which is the disease so you may appreciate the fact that there is a like what should i say notification rates for tb among private practitioners are quite low in many parts of the country i know it is uh, less in parts of mumbai also and even in our area it is low so this was a problem for quite some time okay so this was the disease now i am not going into the details of the structure and function rather i should say the anatomy and physiology of the ntp mechanism because you know it all already but i am telling you about some of the remedies so when we started delving on the disease like we think about a patient we should be de- thinking about the disease itself or the poor notification so the first thing is then what first thing is then we are trying to take a history of the disease so what is the history taking here the history taking is the survey procedures using the different tools which we have thankfully this tv has got several good tools the, and for for all of the functionaries so we can use the tools for identifying systems we also have sophisticated techniques like focus group discussions in depth interviews e informant interviews and other managerial tools with the help of which we can take the history of the patient chief complaints history various kinds of history then the examination of the patient then comes the various kinds of examination of the patient so how can we examine by examining also we shall be looking at the different parts of the anatomy like the systemic examination so how is it done we shall look at the human resource there are checklists for human resource there are checklists for number of human resource there are checklists for roles and responsibilities of human resource so with that we can do a human resource systemic examination of this problem also for inventories for other systems like infrastructures there are checklists we can use them for systemic examination of the infrastructural part similarly we can have systemic checklists for the quality control parts so with all these checklists and interviews we can diagnose the come to some differential diagnosis which we do in our day to day history taking so what can the differential diagnosis it can be like they are not private practitioners are not aware that they should be reporting somewhere that may be one of the differential diagnosis the second may be that they are aware but the mechanism is so tough that they do not give the notification that can be another of the uh, dd the third dd can be they are aware but they, they are not incentivized enough to report that may be one of the uh, dd other dd can be the private sector is not even bothered about giving the uh, uh, notification so these are some of the diseases there can be other diseases also sir they may I, also be like uh, because right. of the financial uh, this that they are just trying to save their time and in that much time they may right. be able to see a couple more patients and make a good uh, financial incentive out of it rather than the incentive provided by the government 
so one right. one actually uh, doesn't feel as responsible towards the system and uh, one more thing that sir even i wanted to add was that probably every private practitioner would think that we would do this much for what effort what is going to come right. out of it and what right. is going to change out of it right exactly so this is another of the dd so like we discuss in the website we shall, we can discuss in our board rooms about the dds right and we can form actually a kind of tool known as a problem tree analysis or we often have fishbone diagrams which are the tools in our this kind of uh, patient scene okay then we have the investigations order what are the investigations we can have focus surveys we can have focus data secondary data analysis so that we can pinpoint the diagnosis so once the diagnosis is pinpoint it can be a single diagnosis it can be a multi morbidity diagnosis which we can also have we can come up with some solutions so what are these solutions firstly there were some solutions which are already made like many of the organizations actually took a conscious effort to train the private practitioners regarding nikhai notification there are many volunteer groups which are working in the cities they, they take up this thing like jit in our uh, kolkata they make a regular rapport building with the private practitioners like the medical representatives they go to the chambers remind them continuously they train them they give them materials also that they ask them to make the nikhai ids also they give their phone numbers saying that if the tv case is there then they will notify the tv case and they will take care of the rest of the things themselves only okay so uh, with this mechanism it is more convenient for the uh, private practitioners that if a tv patient comes they will directly tell to the uh, person okay uh, the next point is that we can incentivize the uh, private practitioners so with each notification they are getting a meager amount but this amount all the same 500 rupees to compensate them also uh, the volunteers and the dos providers are entering into nikhai themselves so it is eliminating the bother of the private practitioners and they are following up the patients themselves right the third point is that uh, in most of the pharmacies the dots medicine are not available now there is banning because there is extremely strict regulatory practices h1 forms and all those things are there so in many of the shops the medicines are not available so the patient has to go to the government sector and if they go to the government sector the follow up can be done in a proper manner so this is some of the remedies or some of the treatments or surgeries or medicines that came out from the discussions and these are in place and thankfully this has decreased the uh, increased the notification rate considerably in the private sector so that is why how we think of a managerial problem in line with our disease framework and come up with solutions after a proper history taking and investigations thank you so much sir for giving us this basic knowledge and the overview on this topic coming to an end of the discussion now sir i would like to take a moment to thank our pg coordinating team and all the office bearers for supporting us in this pg lecture series we encourage you to become a member of the ipsm if you are not yet one and please do subscribe to the ipsm e connect channel to stay tuned to our further events as the moderator of this session this is dr priya varni signing out thank you everyone